Hey developers, and welcome to the G Suite Dev Show. I'm Wesley Chun. Before we get started, I'm excited to announce you'll be seeing more of my colleagues in future episodes as our team has grown, and I'm looking forward to learning from them. Now, what will I be doing? Well, in addition to G Suite, I'll be spending more time on the cloud platform side of the house. As such, I thought it'd be fitting to combine features from G Suite as well as GCP. Before we get started, you know how sometimes when you get something done, you stop as soon as it's working? Take these stairs here. We could quit now because it works, right? Well, I'm here to argue that if you just finish the rest of it, it'll look more appealing visually. And that's the theme for today's show, completing that last mile and literally making things more presentable. We're going to walk through an app script app that takes you from big data analysis with BigQuery all the way to a Google Slides presentation, leveraging Google Sheets in between. We'll link you to the code lab at the end so you can build it yourself. Now, the motivation for this app? I was inspired by three samples our team has already created. First is the app script BigQuery sample in our docs. Second is the sample app in the generating slides from spreadsheet data video. And finally, the third was the Google Slides API Code Lab app, which uses BigQuery to analyze open source license data. Now, first thing, what's app script? Well, it's a customized JavaScript serverless runtime for G Suite automation, extension, and integration. More importantly, how do you access Google and other services with it? Well, at this time, there are two ways, built-in and advanced services. A built-in service is one in which a native app script object provides API functionality. In our app, we'll use both the Google Sheets and Slides built-in services. An advanced service is where there is no native app script object to use. Instead, these rely on the HTTP-based REST APIs, meaning an advanced service is just a thin wrapper around that API. Our use of BigQuery is exactly that. There is no BigQuery service, but there is an API, an advanced service that uses it. In some cases, such as for Sheets and Slides, both built-in and advanced services exist. So which do you pick? Well, generally, APIs operate at a lower level, so a built-in service may not have all API features. On the other hand, built-in services operate at a higher level, and often, a built-in service function is easier to use that would otherwise require multiple advanced service or API calls. Now that we got that squared away, let's begin with BigQuery, GCP's big data analysis tool. I mentioned I was inspired by our app script BigQuery sample. Well, it's an app that finds the top 300 long words, which means longer than 10 characters, in Shakespeare's works. It's a cool query, but I'm just interested in the top 10 most common words in Shakespeare. So let's switch to this query instead. All right, we're going to dive into the code, and you'll see where the query comes in. At the top, we set the name of the query, which will also be the name of the spreadsheet and slide deck. Next is the project ID, which is required by BigQuery. After you create your project in the developer's console, click on the settings three-dot menu that you see up in the corner next to your avatar. Select Project Settings, and then copy that project ID string to the project ID variable you see in the code. The if statement is there to stop you if you don't have this set. The only function in this first version is run query. It starts with the query that we picked earlier. The last few lines kick off the job in BigQuery, and the job ID is used to help collate the results. Now, the next section of code waits for BigQuery to finish using the exponential backoff technique of waiting a bit longer if results aren't in yet. Well, the results are ready once the job complete flag goes true. Now, it's time to fetch all that data from BigQuery, appending chunks a page at a time, or flag an error in the logs if nothing comes back. At this point, we're holding on to a lot of data, so you need somewhere to put it. Now, you could display it to the screen or put it in a database and be done with it. But to promote G Suite with GCP and to make it more visual, it's better to put in a sheet, right? Well, in this part of the code, we create a new sheet with a query name and then add the first row headers, first converting them to uppercase. The results from BigQuery isn't formatted in a way where we can just push it directly into a sheet. Instead, we need to put the data into a more normal 2D array. By the way, massaging the data into a format your app can better process is generally referred to as ETL, which stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. Once the data has been added to the 2D array, we can put those values into the sheet. Got to start at row two so we don't overwrite our headers, right? OK, so now that our data is in a sheet, cool. Now I know what the most common words in Shakespeare are, and I didn't need to count them up myself. 
certainly better than being in a database somewhere. Now, it looks great, but it'd even be more cool if we could visualize it just a tiny bit more, say, with a chart. OK, here's the new function that we'll create for our chart. It takes a spreadsheet object and creates a columnar chart based on the data in cell range A2 to B11. It then inserts the chart starting on row 5, column 5, which is E. Now, one tweak we need to make is to return the spreadsheet from Run Query, so we need to add this as the last line there. Now, the last step is to create a new driver app that calls both of these functions, the first to query and return the newly created sheet, and then to add a chart to it by passing it to create column chart. When you run the modified app, you get the data plus this cool chart. Much more visually appealing, right? Now you have an idea of how the Google Sheets and its API reduces manual labor. By bringing in some automation, you can make better use of your time. OK, next step. Now you could send this to management, but can I make the result even more presentable, like with a presentation? Well, the answer is yes. So we'll use the Slides built-in service to do that. Let's create a third function that takes a sheet and chart objects and creates a new slide deck, filling in the title and subtitle on the default title slide that you get with all new presentations. Now add a blank slide for the spreadsheet data. Much like how we copied the resulting data from BigQuery into Sheets, we need to do something similar to get that data from Sheets into Slides. And don't forget the headers. The code you see here reads all of the data from the sheet, creates a new table on the new slide, and then writes all that data into it. Now, let's add one more blank slide, then insert the spreadsheet chart into it. Pretty straightforward. The final step is to update our driver app to call all three of these utility functions. Don't forget to update create column chart from the previous step to return the chart so we could pass it to create slide presentation. Now check out the beautiful slide deck we have here. You've now completed that final mile, going from big data analysis all the way to a slide deck you can deliver to management. And best of all, without spinning up any server resources yourself. The goal today was to show that you've already done the 80% hard work, but the last 20 is to put frosting on your cake. So what's next? Well, there's many directions for you to go. To build this app yourself and to see all of the code, we invite you to do the code lab and take a look at our GitHub repo. This app was featured in our serverless talk at the 2018 Cloud Next conference. Check out the talk to find out more about interoperability between GCP and G Suite. Hint, in the near future, you won't need the BigQuery advanced service anymore, as there is now a BigQuery connector feature in Sheets, also announced at Cloud Next. You can edit your BigQuery query directly from Sheets. Cool, right? And that's it for now. You've done the hard work already, but need to justify your work to management. So we hope this sample app inspires you to code that final mile in all of your projects with GCP and G Suite DevTools. This is Wesley Chen, and we'll see you upstairs in the G Suite.